truly rejoice again and praise God for this young talent. We will go now to call the ERCC choir to take their own special song now. ERCC choir.
Thank you so much, ERCC Choir, for that beautiful rendition. Please, let's put our hands together and encourage them. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Quickly going through the program, we are on item number five, biography. This will be taken by our brother, Barrister Emmanuel Obadia Melafia. Then after the biography, the next item, the ERCC Women Fellowship Choir, you get ready. I need a good tidying choir also, get ready. But meanwhile, let's take the biography, Barrister Emmanuel. Please, let's put our hands together as we encourage him. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here with us today. I shall give a brief biography of our father, my father, our hero, brother, friend, and national icon. Dr. Obadiah Melafia. Many of you already know Dr. Obadiah Melafia, my father's profile. He lived in service to this country. He was a devoted father, husband, brother, academically, my father was distinguished. He has studied, his early studies started at the Amado Bello University, where he completed his undergraduate and his postgraduate studies. He was a sociologist with a background in economics, politics, and philosophy. But I will not bore you just with uh, the paper history. I'll give you some insights into who my father really was. An academic there are two types of academics. There are the book smart academics and there are those that thirst for knowledge. Book smart academics can receive awards and recognitions from any type of university, be it world renowned ones. Yet, there are academics 
who may not attend a single university, but have that unquenchable thirst for knowledge. My father was a combination of the two. He thirsted for knowledge. He searched for wisdom and understanding. And above all else, he sought to understand this very world that we live in. What do I mean by that? At the center of everything my father was, he was a devout believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. That was his center. This led his thought process to go through the likes of Martin Luther, Dr. Martin Luther King, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a very famous German minister who sacrificed his life for his people. Moral philosophers such as John Stuart Mill. These were all the influences that were on my father's life. Later, he ventured to Europe. He studied in France and adopted fluent French. He attended the Ecole Nationale Polytechnique University, otherwise known as ENA. Many may not know, but ENA is the elite school in France. Since 1945, almost every president and head of state of France came out of ENA. After the Lord guided my father through France, he went on to Oxford University on a Commonwealth scholarship where he completed his PhD doctoral studies at the famous Oriel College. Upon completing that, he ventured into lecturing. He lectured throughout the United Kingdom. The family, we moved, we moved many times. Daddy lectured at more than six different institutions before later becoming a technocrat and he was appointed as an economist with the African Development Bank. In between all of this, daddy sought every opportunity he could to advise and offer consultation to our beloved Nigeria. He wrote countless policy papers. To this day, he has over a hundred publications to his name. Either he co-authored articles, articles he published himself, books that he had chapters dedicated to, the list is endless. After serving at the African Development Bank, our leadership here in our beloved Nigeria sought to call him home. I still remember that day when mommy called me excited. There's been a call from the presidency. Daddy needs to hurry home immediately. We were unaware what was about to take place. They asked my father to come home and serve as the deputy governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. That is how my family came home. Daddy saw this as the one unique opportunity he could have to make a positive, direct impact on the lives of every Nigerian. Service to this country was a pleasure for him. Some people, work is laborious. But when you love your job, work is never labor. 
Serving his country was never labor. If I were to tell you the amount of unpaid consultations daddy has done, you'll be shocked. But that was how much love he had for this country and everybody here. He believed and would always tell me his vision for Nigeria was that we should not compare ourselves with any type of country. Nigeria should stand in the ranks of the United States, of Germany, of the big industrial powers. Such was our potential. And he worked to that aim. So why would a technocrat enter the interesting Nigerian political climate? As you know, my father later entered politics. He ran under the banner of the African Democratic Congress, where he finished third in the national presidential election. He didn't enter politics also by his direct choice. He was called. The elders in our beloved Middle Belt and some of our other brother and sister grassroots and national political associations, they wanted to pick a candidate to represent them. A screening was done. My father emerged as the primary candidate from that screening process. He was invited for that screening. He didn't go and seek it. The rest is history. I just want you to all know today that the loss of Dr. Obadiah Malafia is a significant blow to this country, to us, his family, to all his friends and all those who loved him. Men of moral character and conscience are few. Some stand up in the dying embers of need when there is a crisis and we all remember their names throughout the nations. In America, Dr. Martin Luther King stands tall today. He stood up in the face of danger. He spoke truth to power and was persecuted for it. My father in a similar model stood up and spoke the truth. His heart could not rest with the atrocities that were inflicting his beloved nation. He often told me, son, the Nigeria you see today is not the Nigeria I grew up in. We are so much more and we must strive to be what our potential contains. So I will close here. Nigeria has lost a heroic patriot and one of its brightest ever stars. He led by example. And I pray and ask you all today to join his legs, to stand and uphold his legacy. The truth is the truth. You cannot hide from the truth. Dr. Obadiah Malafia, my father, stood up boldly, courageously, and he spoke the truth. Thank you. If you want to clap, Please clap.
Thank you, Barista Emmanuel. I pray that the Lord will help us to also end well, to end with great history, like Dr. Obada Malafia in Jesus' name. Now, the next item of the program ERCC Women Choir. Give us your rendition after the ERCC Women Choir, then the Good Tiding Choir. All right, let's encourage our mothers as they come to minister to us. Dunia ba kida muba watarana zamu basada 
Thank you. Thank you, choir. Let's appreciate them reminding us of our mortality, reminding us we're here for a while, and also telling us there will be resurrection on the last day. Once again, let's appreciate the ERCC Women Choir. Now, the Good Tidings Choir come. We'll give you three minutes. After the Good Tidings Choir, we go into testimonies. Good Tidings Choir. Thank you for coming. All right, straight ahead, you have the floor. Oh! 
Thank you, choir. Thank you, choir. Please, let's appreciate them for that beautiful rendition. Good tidying, choir. The Lord bless you. Now, when we run up uh, before the testimony, please, let's have some silence. When we run up uh, the special number with the family, the children want to sing for their dad. Please, let's have the siblings come. It's your time. Let's encourage them as they come. Yeah, 
Thank you so much, the family, for this beautiful song. You can see the combination. Even by mentioning them, you know that there was no practice for this song. Let's once again appreciate them. The Lord will comfort the family and encourage your hearts in Jesus' name. All right, keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Now we are on item number seven. Testimonies and that will be handled by our brother God's servant, Reverend Dr. Gideon Paramalam. We handle item number seven. Please let's put our hands together to Jesus as we welcome him. Praise the Lord. Our late brother, Dr. Obadiah Mailafia, was a man of peace, was a man who believes in unity. And this is a very solemn moment. This is a very solemn moment. We will take testimonies. We will appeal that people respect the time as given. We wouldn't like to restrict our mother. But when I come back after her testimony, I'll make an appeal to all others. So would like to respect, sorry, like to invite our mother his widow, Mrs. Margaret, Vu, Obadiah, my love here, to come forward and give a testimony about this great man. It's okay for one or two members of the family to come and escort mommy. Feel free to do so. Absolutely, you're allowed. Sarah Maria. Emmanuel. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good all the time. I would like to assure you that this is a moment in a woman's time that you dread to come and be called here to do what I have to do now. I'm asking for strength from the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, I will not be able to speak.
May I start by blessing our Lord Jesus Christ. For waking up among the living. And for giving me the courage to stand before the children of God this morning. In every capacity, in every areas of life, I am not better than my husband, the great hero, the Oroko tree that has fallen. My beloved husband prayed for me daily after he returned from Akure using Psalms 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. I didn't understand him at all that week. He asked me and to promise that whatever he asked me to do, I will do it without questioning. That is the weakest point that my husband, Obadiah Melapia, can get me. When I promise, I don't break the promise. So I took that promise and I had to obey everything he asked me to do. Since I married Dr. Obadiah Melapia, I have never received this type of pampering. He anoints me. Those who come from the background of anointing oil. He prayed certain unusual prayers. Asking God to protect me and to protect the children. And the Lord to direct my steps and the steps of the children and that the Lord should preserve our beloved nation I never understood all that I never knew my husband was getting ready to go and rest with the almighty words cannot begin to express how much I have loved Obadiah Melapia and how much I treasure him. I will be sincere because I'm standing at the altar of God and I know what it means to be standing here. I feel sad. If women do not marry their lifetime loved ones as husbands, it will be very, very unfortunate for anyone. And I pray for the younger ones that are yet to get married, that Almighty God, we join them with their better half, like the way Dr. Obadiah Melafia has been the greatest husband in life. If I'm given another choice again and again, I can vow to you, I will still select Dr. Obademi Lapia to be my husband. The best part of my life began when I met him. 
and the worst part of my life happened in Guagbalada Specialist Hospital. When my husband had to bid farewell to our nation, the amazing thing was that he was not a weak man. Nobody carried him. Nobody helped Obadiah Melafia to do anything. So the whole thing was just too... I don't know the words to use. It was an unexplained situation for me. It's only God that will explain that to me. Our hero had great plans for me and the children. There was one promise he promised me. He will never bake. And whether he's alive or not, his children will never bake. And I will never bake all the days of our lives. And I believe that with faith in Jesus' name. Obadiah Melafia loved our children so dearly. He gave them the best that a father could ever give to his beloved sons. You can ask Emmanuel standing by me here. I used to sit and watch how Obadiah Melafia when they were going to school, when they were both in boarding school, that was the time I was not allowed to speak or to interrupt or interfere. He will ask the children to go and make their own budget for that term. Dr. Obadiah Melavia will scrutinize from one figure to the other. My beloved Emmanuel was the one who always ran short of money, unlike Samora, because he always finishes money before Samora. And I was not allowed to send any money to any of them in secret. And remember, I took a vow and I don't break my vow. So you can imagine how you know your son has spent all his allowances and he has to survive. Emmanuel learned the hard way through his father. And I thank God for that teaching that he's passed on to this young man. Today, I can tell you, Emmanuel is one of, he's been a lawyer, but he's one of the best accountants you can imagine when it comes to maintaining his money and allowances. There are certain things that many of you here don't know about Obadiah Melafia. As my son rightly opened a few secrets yesterday. Obadiah Melafia opened an organization known as SEPA, Center for Economic and Poli Policy and Economic Research. Some best intellectuals came out of that training he gave them and i'm proud to say they are great today and they are contributing their quarters through the hard work that they went through the mentoring of obadiah melafia in that sefer obadiah melafia offered he used to offer scholarship for over 200 students he never want anybody to know that. Many of these students are holding key positions in private and government institutions. He was also a man that used to privately tutor and lecture young men and women in his private times when they were writing their projects he mentored so many young people 
you will be surprised most of them came from the children of our governors, senators, former presidents. He had one belief that if you train these young people, they will not follow the path of corruption. So Obadiah did such things secretly without many people knowing what he used to do. He suggested their research topics. He will follow them by giving them guidance. He will guide them. Many who were starting businesses, Obadiah may laugh here sometimes, we visit them. He will contribute into such businesses without any soul not knowing what he was doing. That is the kind of man Obademi Lafia was. My husband believed that we must become people who have love for one another. We must bridge the divided mistrust and reach out to accept one another for a greater future Nigeria. He believed that we used to, we need a unifying spirit that we allow for sincere change to begin within the individual, within you, within all of us. That is where the true change of our nation can begin. He believed that when you begin to change yourself, it will reflect on your families. From there, it will reach out to society, to our churches, mosques, to our communities, and to the nation, and Africa, and internationally at large. The great hero also believed that innocent blood has been split in our nation for many, many years. And that innocent blood has brought causes to this nation. And he believed the way out is to call on the almighty God to give, forgive all our sins and cleanse our land for a new Nigeria to emerge. We can only achieve this not by our own powers, but through the power of the Holy Spirit. He loved people of all ages, of different educational background, religion, gender. And you know one thing with the Holy Spirit, the people he loved the most are sinners, not the righteous ones. The righteous are already saved. Many people out there will miss the physical presence of our Iroko tree that has fallen, especially the children and myself. My dear brethren, the question is that, do we miss Dr. Obadiah Melafia more than he misses us? I believe that his great love for us he misses us more than we miss him. Because Obadiah Melafia wanted to see the best of Nigeria. He wanted to see a land that people will prosper. A land that people will have freedom. Where we are going to be doing our businesses we will grow to the maximum of our abilities and capabilities. 
Today we are not reaching there because all of us know the situation facing each one of us. And what Dr. Ebadeh Melafia spoke about, ladies and gentlemen, is it not happening today? What happened in Guagualada, University of Abuja? For those who do not know, people were stolen, lecturers were stolen, and their families. This was what Obadiah Melafia feared the most. And it's happening today. of this young, wonderful young men and the women. Goodbye, our beloved fallen president, Nigeria never had. The true game changer has gone to rest at the bosom of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has finished his race. Now, the mantle has been handed over to those who have clean hands and pure hearts. Those are the people that God hear their prayers. God does not hear the prayers of sinners. That is the truth. Goodbye, my hero, my great fearless lion that even death cannot stop you. According to the book of John chapter 10, verses 10, Satan has come to kill, steal, and to destroy. But Christ Jesus has come to give us life, and he's given us the life in abundance. So enjoy your rest. And remember to pray for our younger son, Samora Daniel Mbogaladima whom we have continued to battle for years. I want to pray for all the church leaders here today. Help us pray in your churches, in your closet, that the Lord will bring healing into this young man. Obademi Lafia did his best for his family, for his siblings, for Ninzon people, he did his best for the Middle Belt. He did his best for Southern Kaduna. He did his best for the North, for the South, for the East, and for the West. Deep down inside my heart, I believe and I have faith that the battle is just beginning for our nation to become a free nation. When we unite together and stand as one and stop this disbelief and corrupted mind that some people have poisoned us to hate one another, if we continue like that, we will not achieve the greatness Nigeria deserves to have. But when we collectively come together, churches uniting together, mosques uniting with the churches, all of us coming together, we shall win this wicked evil 
that is tormenting each one of us. I want to finally say, and I am on my knees here now. Church leaders. Thank you. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. May God bring comfort and encouragement to his widow. In the course of a testimony, she mentioned the love the father had for their two boys. She also asked that prayers be made by church leaders for one of the brothers who should have been with us this morning, but he's not able to be with us. But he has written something, and I would invite Sarah Maria, who is a fiancé to Emmanuel, to quickly bring the message from the young man. His name is Samora. May love here. Good morning, everyone. Excellencies, governors, senators, chairmen, chairwomen, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I greet you all in the name of our Lord. My name is Sara Maria Martens Malafia. I am highly privileged and honored to speak here before you in name of um, Samora Daniel Umbo Malafia. Samora said that he is blessed to be the son of Dr. Obadiah Malafia. He said, Dad, you are not only my hero, you are my role model, you are my best friend. Simply put, you are the best father anybody could wish for. You possessed a legendary intellect. You were a faithful Christian. You stood up and you carried your cross. You were Nigeria's equivalent of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. As kids, mom and you, you would drop us at the school and you would hug us and you said, I love you, Dad. I love you, Samora. I love you. Have a great day. As you can all imagine, this can be a little bit embarrassing in front of the school gates to hear this. But between two young African boys, but this was something between you and it's cherished forever. As a matter of fact, still today, you call each other great lion. Dad, you would always encourage us. You would say, Hakuna Matata, all the best. I have faith, as said by mommy, and as anointed by everybody present here today, that I will be healed, and I will return, and I will achieve my destiny. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, dear Anna Maria. Um, we will once again be inviting those who should have given tributes yesterday but we had to cut short the program so we could close on time. I want to appeal to those who would be given chance to come forward here to please respect two minutes, maximum three minutes. It's an appeal. Would like to invite the 
representative of Afeni Ferry, Dr. Akin Fako Hunda, to please come forward. On behalf of uh, Afeni Ferry, a short tribute. On a personal note, Obada is a friend and a brother. He calls me Egbon, big brother in Yoruba language. He makes a gesture of prostrating when he sees me, and I always laugh because he's supposed to be a big man. These traits are those of the Malua base of the Yoruba nation. He may have been born out of Kaduna State, but he has these traits that are identified with the Yoruba peoples of the world. He is thus a cross-cultural person. He could have been an excellent product of the free education legacy of above lower years. That Nigeria failed to embrace the far-sightedness of education for all policy of Western Nigeria since 1954 is the reason why we have banditry and brigandage across Nigeria today. We are paying a very big price. We speak of Obadaya as one of us in Afeni Ferry, the foremost Yoruba social cultural organization, is a voice of reason out of the Middle Belt region of Nigeria. Like many other true children out of the house of Awolowo, is a believer in the quest for change in the Nigerian polity. He spoke passionately for a restructured Nigeria. He not only spoke, but he also acted without fear of those who are sitting on top of us in the Nigerian polity. Very few have courage of their convictions. Most covert positions. Many act in favor of personal comfort, acting in complicit with the oppressors. Obada has the opportunity to be with the establishment he could have gotten anything in the world, but he wisely chose to be with the people. He fought on the side of those making calls for Nigeria to be restructured so that we can have self-determination across Nigeria. Nigeria shall be restructured. Freedom shall flourish. Time, it is just a matter of time. Finally, it is not an accident that he became one of the most articulate columnists in the Nigerian Tribune newspapers. He readily found intellectual home in the Tribune. Obadiah wrote copiously every week without fail. No issue or idea was out of bounds for this course. His legacy is online. Just Google his name. You will get to know his writings and with the internet, its legacy remains forever. Finally, on behalf of Chief Ayo Adibanjo, the leader of any federal organization, we join you, the people of the Middle Belt of Nigeria, the people of the world, to celebrate. We are not mourning him because he has lived a good life. The passage of Dr. Obadiah Milafia. We commiserate with the family friends and associates, death at whatever age is a matter of faith and destiny. The will of God cannot be changed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Akin, for making it extremely brief. Thanks. Uh, we would like to call on the representative of Fanny Ferry, uh, Sorry, um, Ohanaze, 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 are they here? Ohanaze, 
Okay, Pandev. Is Pandev here? We promised you yesterday. Oh, thank you. Please proceed. Thank you. Uh, this is... Thank you. I think of my friend, Dr. Obadiah Malafia. I'm fairly older than him, but we re we related as good equal friends. I imagine, I'm just seeing about, he was born in Randa, in Sanga, in Kaduna. I would have made a great joke of that rhyme and we would have laughed our heads off. But I stand here today, not just as friend, but representing Pan the Pan Niger Delta Forum of the South South of Nigeria. We knew him as a great person in the making. The incident referred to in the biography about a process towards presidential candidacy is true. He came to the South and Middle Belt meeting one day and just made a contribution. And everyone turned and said, oh, we have somebody like this in Nigeria. OK. But as it's also written here, that is history. And so right now, I come on behalf of our national leader of PANDEF, Chief Dr. Senator Edwin Kiagodo Clark, who eventually transformed Dr. Melafia into sonship. In the past four or five years, he has called him nothing but son. And in Pandev, we had nothing other than respect for his intellectual capacity and the possibilities that he represented if Nigeria were a different set piece. He's gone now. But we know one thing for sure. We've heard a lot already here today. They say he spoke truth to authority. He spoke truth to power. I say, beyond all of that, he spoke truth, truth to principalities. The demons had no control over him. He was not afraid of man. He feared only God. And if God has chosen to take him when he has, who are we to complain? He was a sportsman in school, good in education and in everything. In my kind of school, that's called an all-rounder. And so I say, my friend, Obadiah, you have battered your innings and battered very well. That's cricket language. And nobody can say that you did not do what God called you on earth to do. Pandev, bids you farewell. Haven't spoken truth, and Jesus is the truth, obviously, on the day that the saints are being called, surely, as we pray and wish, you will be in that number, in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, Pandev representative. Our Father, General Yakub Gawan, send this tribute. We won't read it, but we'll refer you to the program booklet and read it because he would have loved to be here personally. Uh, but because he's out of the country, he simply sent his thoughts in writing. And you can look it in the program on the Nigeria Praise section. Yeah, we want to make an appeal to all of us at this point. I would like to move forward and quickly invite the leader of the Middle Belt, just a brief statement, uh, Dr. Kogo, because they spoke yesterday, but we feel we should give him a chance to say something uh, during the service. And then after that, I'll go straight to the church leaders and then we'll close. 
Reverend, sorry, Dr. Beatus Pogo, President of the Middle Bell. Uh, good morning, our leaders, elders, uh, our friends from uh, the South. Now, it's uh, a privilege to be here um, and to tell you that uh, though only Pandev and Ohanese and, and uh, Afeni Ferre were represented, uh, Ohanese and Debo were also here yesterday, uh, but they didn't have the opportunity and their plan and uh, itinerary had to send them back. So we have been partnering along with the, our late Obadiah with these groups from the South. And the reason for partnership is that along with us in the fight and we will continue so that that legacy would continue. Um, Dr. Mailafia did something before he parted, as if he knew he was going to pass on. He requested that his burial ceremony be, I mean, taken right here at this venue. And we thank God for those who planned this program for respecting that request to ensure that his burial ceremony is now taking place at this venue. So as leader of uh, the Middle Belt Forum, uh, we would want to thank the organizers for respecting his wishes and the managers of this center for allowing this to take place here. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Pogo. Uh, Dr. Melafia was a man of peace and he believes in the unity of this country. And I will be making more comments on that as time goes on. We're going to now draw a curtain on our leaders speaking. After that, I'll move to church leaders. After this, one more. Uh, the governor of Plateau State has stood with the family has done tremendous things, and the governor of Benue State, uh, since when we, our brother passed on, uh, but both governors are unavoidably absent, and they duly communicated that they would not be able to make it just at the last minute due to certain developments. But the governor of Benue sent a representative yesterday, Governor Otom, and uh, the governor of Plateau State sent his commissioner of information to represent him here. And we will invite um, Honorable um, uh, Commissioner, yes, uh, there, Dan Manja, to please quickly come forward and just offer a very brief uh, tribute to our late brother from His Excellency, uh, Honorable uh, Simon Bakola Long. Uh, thank you very much. I uh, greet us all in Jesus' name. Like my brother, Reverend Paramalam said, the governor is unavoidably absent. Uh, all we can say, and very briefly and quickly, so that I keep to the three minutes at most that I've been given, is that uh, the governor said, that I should commiserate with the family. I've already spoken to the wife and conveyed his message. The governor of Plateau State uh, says that Reverend Obadiah Melafia means a lot to different things to different people. I have known him personally. Uh, he's somebody who has fulfilled the purpose for which God created him. And so that is how we have to live. We live legacies. He was, if there's nothing that he'll be known for, he'll be known for being courageous and he'll be known for speaking the truth. And that is what we need to emulate. As Christians, we need to stand on the path of truth. We need to be united. And like I did say, the governor said, uh, the, the Dr. Melafia lived well. And how he ended well, the ending is the most important thing. The beginning is so, so good. But how we end 
uh, Johnny Airborn. In the, at the end of the manual, it was said for landing, refer to manual two. And he didn't have manual two. Of course, he will land, but he will crash land. Over there, Melafia did not crash land. He landed very safely. And that is the desire of each and every one of us, including me. Thank you for the opportunity that I've been given. And is the governor of Plateau State commiserates with the family and Christian Dom. I appreciate this opportunity, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Honorable Dan Manja. Please convey our greetings and gratitude and thus those of the family to His Excellency Governor Lalong. We will now listen to brief words from church leaders and the Khan National President has also asked the Khan General Secretary, Barrister Joseph Daramolar, to bring words briefly. My leaders in the faith, our dear sister, Mrs. Margaret Melafia, the traditional rulers here, your excellencies, Khan is grieved with what had happened to our brother. Khan is very much concerned about him and about what happened to him. Barely 24 hours when he departed from this world, Khan issued a letter. And I wrote that letter, I signed it, and I sent it to the family. The letter is on page 52 of this brochure. I don't want to sound repetitive with what all people are saying. We are saying the same thing in various in different languages and in different tones. All I need to say is that Khan is contributing and has contributed to this arrangement in no small measure. All we need to say is that may his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in perfect peace. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, General Secretary Barrister Daramola. And we just proceed, and I'll invite our beloved brother and bishop, Bishop Matthew Hassan Kuka, the Bishop of Sokoto Catholic Diocese. Let's welcome Bishop Kuka. Uh, Mrs. Melafia, the clergy, everybody, we're all in this together. I am sorry, I was supposed to have been at the wake keep and to preach the sermon, but uh, we were busy with other duties in Anambra, and uh, or just as well, because I got in very late yesterday in the evening. Um, Dr. Robert Melafia, I actually always call him Professor Melafia, and he will shake his head. And I say to him, you are more than just being called a doctor. And for some strange reason, I always saw Dr. Melafia as Professor Melafia. I think his son, let me say, made the mistake of referring to him as a sociologist. Professor Melafia that I knew, not only crossed all continents physically and intellectually, but crossed literally every subject. 
you could hold a discussion with Professor Melafia on ancient Greek philosophy. You could hold a conversation with Dr. Melafia on the history of the Catholic Church or the Roman Empire, whichever one you chose. He was not only an accomplished scholar, but one of the things that continued to, I continue to reflect on from the time I heard of his death was how did it take Melafia so long to come to the public space? Uh, for the better part of his uh, 64 years on earth, many of you who knew him, people knew him as a scholar, but also as a bureaucrat and an international diplomat. And as a result, there was very little, if anything, that Nigerians knew about him. If you didn't move in academic cycles or in international and national bureaucratic cycles. I first met Dr. Melafia on the pages of the newspaper as I was going to England in 1986 for my doctoral program. And I stumbled on an article, a three-part article that Dr. Melafia wrote. And that was the first time I heard his name. I clipped that article, took it with me to England. And if you read my book, Religion, Politics, and Power, you'll see my reference. Our paths will later cross. And that was the first time I saw Melafia physically. I was working on the streets of Oxford in 1986. And from across the road, I saw somebody waving at me. I didn't know who he was. And he ran across the road and embraced me. Told me his name was Obed Melafia. That was our first physical meeting. Since then, our paths will cross in a lot of academic fora, but also many fora in which we were thinking about our country. But you know, God saved the best time of his life for the last years of his life. And it was literally in the last two or three years like a man on a sprint. And that is how he caught national attention. Dr. Melafia is not somebody we should mourn. Uh, he's a younger brother, but I look back and I know that when we count the years as human beings, we must also remember that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, lived barely half the number of years that Melafia lived. So in the final analysis, it is not the amount of years. Um, as the thoughts about the possibility of a new Secretary General for the Commonwealth, a Commonwealth Secretary in London began to go around. I remember that I was humbly consulted and Dr. Melafia was in the race to become the Secretary General of the Commonwealth. One thing led to the other, God had other plans. I want to say that Melafia's life is a testimony about what Nigeria should be. It's also a testimony about what the Church of Christ should be because he injected and he introduced into national conversation the urgency of fixing Nigeria. But I think for those of you who are in politics, if there is anything we can take away, it is that Dr. Melafia helped to move the needle of national conversation and place the middle belt at the heart of the debate about the future of Nigeria. It may have taken us years to come to this point, but we are at a point in which we cannot pull back. So the best legacy and the best tribute we can pay to Dr. Melafia is not to mourn him, but also to look at his illustrious contribution to national debate, and also to bring with a greater sense of urgency the need for a deep intellectual understanding of the problems of Nigeria. There are a lot of good men and good women in Nigeria. And the mistake we've always made is that we are looking for good men to change Nigeria. There's nowhere in the world where the illiterate have formed a civilization. The building of a civilization is an intellectual exercise. And that alone should give us the courage to hold a candle on behalf of Dr. Melafia. If 
finally, as I told you, Margaret, the last time I checked, our God is a perfect God. He still remains a perfect God. And his perfection does not lie in how much what he does aligns with our ordinary human thinking. You are now a father, a mother, but as we said, and as I said to you, the Lord has already assured us he will never place a burden on our shoulders that we cannot carry. He has also assured us that what seems like a burden to us is always a light burden. So I would like, on behalf of all of us, um, please, just give me a second. All the men here, all the religious men here, please rise up. Because I would like us to pray for somebody who has asked for our prayers, namely Samora, his son. Uh, in one of the tributes, I don't know whether it's that of his wife or his own tribute, Samora says, and I, I'm sorry, uh, but he said something that I think all of us should honor because it struck me. He said, please, Dad, present my case to the throne of God with Grandpa and Grandma from both Daddy and Mommy's side. I have faith that I am healed and will return and achieve my destiny in Jesus' name. So on behalf of all of us here, I'd like us to raise our hand and wherever Samora is, that the blessings of God will meet him and that the prayers that he himself has articulated, the Lord who knows our hearts and who has plans for us beyond our understanding and comprehension, within our own eyes and within our own life, May the Lord bring restoration to Samora so that he can accomplish the race that the Lord himself has set for him. May God hear our prayers because we ask everything in the name of Christ, our Savior. Amen. Finally, once again, as I said, we are not mourning. We are celebrating a great life. May the Lord who brought our son, our brother, and our friend to this earth and who has taken him back to himself, give him a seat that he deserves through the mercy of God. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Bishop uh, Kuka, as you know. He was actually in Anambra as at last night, but he told me he will do his best to be with us, so I'm personally thrilled that he was able to make it uh, to join us and to offer this beautiful tribute. I would like to invite ERCC president, that is the church denomination that Dr. Obadiah Mailafia was raised and where they attended church service with his family. And ERCC has been very gracious in being a backbone to this service. Please join me to welcome very Reverend David Denji, the president of ERCC. Brothers and sisters, I greet us all in Jesus' name. As a denomination, we gathered here today, principally to lay to rest one of us in whom we are well pleased, in whom we draw pride. We thank God so much for the life of Dr. Obadia Melafia. Dr. Obadia Melafia was born and brought up under one of our earliest indigenous evangelists. Baba Gambo Melafia. And since then, he attended his primary school and secondary school in one of our prestigious college, Mother Hill Secondary School, Akwanga. And ever since then, Dr. Obadia Melafia has consistently made ERCC proud, made the Rwanda community proud, and made Nigeria proud. We're gathered here today 
to thank God for this rare gift, a gift to ERCC, a gift to the Christian community in Nigeria, and a gift to the world. We pray sincerely that may the Lord God Almighty continue to keep the family. All the legacies and the good things he has done, we pray that the Lord will raise the family to do even more. May the Lord God Almighty bless you and keep you. Thank you. All right, once again, let's appreciate the president for the words of encouragement. We've been seated quite a while. We are going to take the message, but before the message, we will take congregational hymn, one standard, and then the preacher will come. Up on to page um, number four. Page four, have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? May we all rise, we'll take first standard and the chorus and then we invite the equa president reverend dr stephen panya to come and give us gospel all right together let's go have you been to jesus for the place in prayer are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His presence? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? In the soul, please, in the blood of the Lamb. Thank you for going again. Please take your seat. At this juncture, I would like to invite the Equa President International, Reverend Dr. Stephen Panya Baba, for the sermon. Please let's put our hands together to Jesus. As we welcome you. You're welcome, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. The chief mourner, the very reverend and president of the ERCCN Church, and all our spiritual fathers and distinguished guests that are here, I bring you greetings from our leader of Tekan Equa, Reverend Dr. Ahima, who would have really loved to be here, but is inevitably absent. And from Equa Executive and Equa family worldwide. They are praying for us, and just like it has already been we believe that God shall round up this funeral service for us in a glorious way. May the Lord comfort our mother and the entire family and comfort his church all in Jesus' name. I would like us once more again to rise up as we go to the Lord in prayer. Let us rise up as we go to the Lord in prayer. Hear my cry, O oh Lord, attain unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto you. Yeah. 
Feliz Hayatan Ang That is Hayatan Ang For you have been A shelter unto Strong tower from the enemy. For when my heart is overwhelmed, please lead me to the rock that is higher than I. the rock that is higher than any other. Indeed, apart from you, there is none other. And we bow in recognition of your Lordship over our lives, over your church, over this world, and over this universe. You are the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And now that it has pleased you to bring us to this stage to hear from you, we ask, O oh Lord, we plead that you will speak to us from your throne of grace. Place your word in our hearts. Let it be a fruit and fruit that will last unto eternity. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for being here. Be thou glorified. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being here. Be thou exalted. Thank you, Lord Holy Spirit, for being here. Be thou magnified in our midst. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Let's sit down, please. And as we sit down, let's turn to 1 Corinthians 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and I'm going to read from verse 50. Corinthiawa, Tafari, Sura Goma, Shabir, Dega Aya Hamsun, Zua Hamsun, the Tokos. The word of God says, I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the imperishable inherit the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will be changed in the flash, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with imperishable, the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, 
and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm, let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. This is the word of the Lord. I want to speak on victory at last. Victory at last. We've heard about our beloved father who has passed on to glory. And so much has been spoken about how God has used him to touch lives especially in the world, outside the church. But I want us to look at him as a soldier of the cross. A soldier of the cross. As wonderful as our physical birth is, it is not as significant and eventful as the day of our spiritual birth. When you are born again of the spirit of God and saved from the kingdom of darkness and brought into the kingdom of light, the kingdom of our savior and Lord Jesus Christ. No event is so powerful like our being born again. Indeed, the day you are born again, whether you know it or not, whether you like it or not, you are enlisted in a war. The enemy, the devil, and his demonic forces of evil declare a war against you the very day that you gave your life to Christ and you were born again. Ephesians 6, 12 says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Someone has rightly said that for the Christian, for the true believer, this world is not an amusement ground. It is a battlefield. For a true Christian, this world is not an amusement ground. It is a battlefield. And the last battle is fought on death it is when the soldier of the cross has fought all kinds of battle and has finally been led to rest in death that at that point we can say victory at last victory at last Victory at last. And I dare say that for our beloved father, whom God used to fight so much, many battles on behalf of people from all walks of life, from different cultures in this world, on behalf of the oppressed, the downtrodden, on behalf of the suffering, the persecuted, and indeed, he came from one of the most suffering and persecuted region of Nigeria today, Southern Kaduna. And he spoke and spoke and fought the battle. But today, I declare to you that it is victory at last in the name of Jesus. It is victory at last in the name of Jesus. I say victory at last. If you believe, shout hallelujah. It is victory at last. 
It can never be true of anyone more than our beloved father, Dr. Obadiah Melafia. As I was listening, I could just see clearly that God prepared him for the battle right from birth. God prepared our late father for the battle right from birth and used him mightily to the very end. Our God prepared him spiritually, physically, and even financially and materially, God prepared him. His spiritual preparation was very fundamental. And in fact, it is very fundamental for any true believer in Christ, for any true soldier of, of the cross. Your spiritual foundation, your spiritual preparation is the most important because it is fundamental. It is very, very, very important. I am a missionary kid too. I am a missionary child. Our beloved father was raised as a missionary child. And from what we know, from my own personal experience, I know without doubt that he was exposed to the Bible right from the early stage. If you're a missionary child, I dare say by 5 a.m., his father must have been waking him and his siblings up for prayer. And in the evening, the father must have been bringing them together again to pray before everybody goes to sleep. He must have grown up and seen and be taught in the art of prayer, in the art of fasting, in the art of waiting upon God and all other spiritual disciplines. He was exposed to the undiluted, uncompromising evangelical teachings and traditions that is common in the Middle Belt where the SUM, Sudan United Mission, and SIM, Sudan Interior Mission, did their work just before he passed on to glory. One of our fathers, Baba Trusty Ware, he looked at me, he said, my son, the kind of gospel that the SIM missionaries brought to us is about tongue gospel. And he said, the about tongue gospel requires that when you are traveling this way and you meet Christ, then you will turn around and start going the opposite direction so that you are true. It is bye-bye to the world. It is bye-bye to sin. And it is a life in righteousness. I have no doubt that our beloved father was exposed and heard the about on gospel. The blessing of Middle Belt Christianity is its evangelical heritage and its emphasis on salvation, true repentance, evidenced by the fruit of repentance. What? I have already said about Tom gospel. The gospel preached required that if you are heading and living in sin, that as a proof that you have met Christ, you will start living in righteousness, in holiness. It is this evangelical 
heritage that gave, that God used to give Dr. Melafia a very sound spiritual foundation. God prepared him physically even. Evangelical missions that came to us then were concerned not only about our spiritual lives, but also our intellectual and physical development. And so they brought Medicare, they brought education. The mission work of Sudan United Mission gave back to Evangelical Reformed Church of Christ in Nigeria today. And this impacted our father very greatly. He attended Sudan United Mission Primary School in Musha. And then he went to Mada Hills Secondary School established by ERCCN. Now, for some of us that went to those mission schools in those days, if you saw them, you will even ask, can anything good come out of Nazareth? I've never been to Musha, but I have had cause to pass through Akonga and have seen Mada Hills Secondary School over and over and over again. And when I heard that this is where Dr. Melafia finished his secondary school, I was shocked that such a humble place can produce such an intellectual giant. But typical of God, He is used to taking the nothings of this world and glorify, glorifying himself. And so it was in this school, Mother Hill Secondary School, that God reinforced the foundation for a balanced, sound spiritual life as well as give him the intellectual foundation that he built on to become one of the greatest giants and our hero. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.26-31 says, Brothers, think of what you were where you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let him who boasts Bust in the Lord. Even Dr. Melafia himself, from this humble beginning, will never have dreamt of the great feats achieved. It was God answering the prayers of his father beyond what he could think or imagine, bringing his word and promises to fulfillment in the life of our beloved daddy. Taking the foolish things to shame the wise, the weak things to shame the strong, the lowly despise the things that are nothing. God picks them up and he confounds the things that are. That is the God that we serve. Hallelujah. Picking a village boy who attended a village primary school and a village secondary school 
to shame and confound the high and mighty in the world today. Come on, let's give the Lord a big clap offering. Hallelujah. That is the God that we serve. How could we have been celebrating our father today if not for the grace of God upon his life? If you consider his family, the son of an evangelist that in the world today you will say is basically nothing. Going to a primary school that is nothing. Going to a secondary school that was not known. And yet, being put on the world stage to confound the high and mighty. Glory, honor be unto God in Jesus' name. That is our God. That is our God. Do you know? As I listened to the testimonies, as I read his biography, I came to one conclusion. Our beloved daddy, our beloved father, belonged to the Isaac generations. Do you know the Isaac generation? Like Isaac in the Bible, he simply enjoyed the overflowing grace that came through his father, Abraham. And this is what I see in the life of our beloved father. He enjoyed the overflowing grace that flowed from his father. Like we had his son say and gave the testimony. Before he was even born, his father was gathering books for a baby boy that was even yet to be born. So you can imagine that the father must have been praying and the father must have been crying out to God and no wonder God's hand was mighty upon him. Many first and second generation Christians enjoyed the same overflowing grace. Because of that, he never forgot to fight for Christ and his kingdom's interests for the good of all. He was a true soldier of the cross. He fought for the welfare, for the good of all. No matter your tribe, no matter your ethnicity, no matter your region, no matter your religion. Dr. Obadiah Melafia stood for the truth, fought for the truth, spoke the truth, and he did it all for good of everyone in the nation and for the good of humanity. The Lord prepared him 